going a little full circle here from the beginning of not really taking care of myself and getting to that point of burnout and hearing Stacy Walker's story and scaring me, <laughs> scaring me straight. I scared you. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're ambitious, you're gorgeous, you're slaying. There's one problem, though. It can be a lonely road while building your empire. Guess what? You're not alone. It's the Biz Mom Real Deal podcast with Stacey Walker and Maria Gonzalez. We're two moms in love with our businesses, our families, and making a difference in the world, just like you. Every week, we're having candid conversations about our real lives. The good, the bad, the ugly, the real deal. All right. So, my goodness, so you feel so much better, huh? I really do. Um, so, you know how last week I was like, I think I, what was it, like, a, I thought I had food poisoning. Because mm-hmm. um, I had some salad the night before that was kind of like on the verge of being a little questionable. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, nah, it'll be fine. Expiration dates are always wrong. Yeah. It's just a day. You know, and um, yeah, I woke up the next day just like nauseous and, you know, sick, I'm dying. But at the same time, like I can't sit still. Like I feel like I'm missing out on so much. And then, you know, I had to send emails out to clients and be like, I'm so sorry. Like I just have to admit that I'm not feeling well and you're just, I'm just going to be out this week. Mm hmm. Which um, also kind of sucked, too, because it was the first week that Amelie was out of school. So I was hoping to, like, you know, take her to do stuff, at least for a portion of the day. So but at least she got to spend it with her grandmother, so that was fine. But, yeah, just completely sick. And then this weekend, it got a whole lot better. And Caesar made me soup, which was really good. And, yeah, I'm still a little stuffy, but totally, totally better. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, my gosh, I felt so bad for you because, like, even though we were, like, texting, I was just like, gosh, I I could just see you miserable and... uh. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And I had to, like, Caesar had to take the phone away from me. Girl, this is how pathetic I am. I hit it at one point because he had taken it away from me. He was like, quit checking your goddamn emails. (laughs) It's not that important. You need to get better. You need to get better. I'm like, wait, but no, they need to hear from me. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. As if the world is going to collapse and it's, you know. So finally, like, I surrendered. Well, yeah. um, Because I hit the phone. (laughs) And Caesar was like, come on, Maria. (laughs) Wow, you're that bad. You're that bad, huh? I'm pretty. I just, I can't. Yeah, I have to. um, What's it called? Uh, I have to like, have all these, like, reminders Mm -hmm. to stop, Mm -hmm. like, take my time, like, for instance, in my calendars, like, I have all of my, I have to stack my stuff, like, blocked out, like, during so-and-so time and -and so-and-so time, I work on client stuff, in so-and-so time, so-and-so time, this is my marketing, and then I have to literally put in my calendar from 12.30 to 1.30, that's lunch, Mm -hmm. like, go eat some lunch, because, you know, we probably touched on this sometime, but, I just, I won't, I'll forget, or I'll eat, like, a little something, and then come dinner time, I'm just ravished. Yes, you know know, what that means? That means that you got a snack throughout the day. Yeah, I actually bought some, like, little, what's it called, those, like, um, little pouches of, like, trail mix and Mm -hmm. stuff like that, fruits, but it's just, I'm really bad about, um doing any kind of meal prepping like in an ideal world Sundays would be like all about meal prepping (laughs) all the dinners would be made and all the lunches and snacks and you know not over here (laughs) (laughs) and that's the ideal thing too and that's what I tell you know my my design and organize you clients like I'll touch on that and and I try to do it but it's it is hard like you know life happens and yeah I guess I guess the beauty of it Maybe if you want to call it that way, you just gotta, you just gotta roll with the punches. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I had a conversation with um, a lady by <laughs> Marina yesterday uh, for the uh, self care, self love video series, and we we're talking about food, like food prepping, and uh, 
a lot of us mamas don't cook that much. Uh, entrepreneur uh-huh. mamas, we really don't cook that much. So there's the option. Yeah, you could food prep maybe one day. I don't do that. I think I've done it like once. Um, yeah. But what I what I do do, I just buy things that you can easily eat, um, like sandwiches, uh, blocks of cheese and ham and yogurt. Oh, yeah. You know, just things that are simple to get that aren't, you know, unhealthy you know it's not a bunch of sugar but just like easy things to get I you know I wouldn't mind food prepping you know because like actually I would rather hire somebody to do that I know there's people that would definitely do it you know I have Jordan baby Jordan you know so yeah always like making sure he's all right but it's like I can sit sit at my computer for hours I know you can you can work you know, for a long, long period of time. And then before mm-hmm. you know it, you, before you realize it, you're like, dang, it's already like four or five hours later. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can, I'm so guilty of that. Like Caesar will even call me and be like, have you eaten, you know, have you, you know, taken a rest and all that. Like I literally have gotten to the point where I have to schedule even those 10, 15 minute breaks of, you know, it doesn't have to take that long, but just to get it, getting up and like go outside on my porch and just breathe some fresh air, like it changes your dynamic, like completely. Like I can totally tell the difference when I just, you know, hustle through the day and just put my head down and like work, 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 mm-hmm. as opposed to like the days where I do take those moments to take a breather, go for a walk. Um, I don't know, even take a little cat nap. Sometimes, like, that was a hard one. Like, I felt so guilty once, uh, but I was just so tired. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm just going to put my head down for, like, ten minutes. Girl, I was gone for, like, two hours. (laughs) before I know it I wake up and I'm like you know those moments where like you wake up from from sleeping you're like wait what time is it where am I what's yeah going like what what day is it I'm like thinking it's the next day because I sleep so darn hard yes I know but that is so um unhealthy and so mm-hmm. it, it was that day that I was like okay like even like 10 minutes 20 minutes I'll put my alarm on timer whatever and just give myself that permission to breathe. And so once I, once I did that and granted I'm, you know, I don't do it every day. And sometimes I do, you know, have those days where I'm just like, I need to go, 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 but so different. And I can tell that my work is just feels more aligned with what I'm doing Mm -hmm. with whatever goal it is that I'm trying to um, achieve either for that day or for that week. It just feels more natural and so I think that's where a lot of that burnout I know that you have talked a whole Mm -hmm. lot about how you just didn't call it quits but like you had to take a sabbatical for two years Mm -hmm. for that reason and so that honestly like when you when you mentioned that when I first heard you talk about that I was like holy shit that scared me yeah it is scary Okay, 100%. I, I, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, um, it really resonated with me because I could feel myself, you know, I would even just like start lashing out at Caesar or Amelie for no reason. My mom, like I was just in, I was just a huge bitch. <laughs> but, but for that reason, because I, I thought in my mind's eye, I thought, oh, the only way that I can succeed and, you know, be on par with, you know, my competition or these women that I so much admire and that I so much want to be like. Mm. And, you know, it's that whole also comparison factor that can be such poison. So going back to your story, like that was one of those, you know, big aha moments. And I had to, I had to tell myself, like, you know, stop it. Stop it, Maria. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You need to change stuff. Yes. And, you know, that's why I, I've been sharing, you know, my experience with, you know, running myself to the ground because it wasn't anything that happened overnight. You know, it took about a year until it finally caught up to me. Like, it was just these gradual, Mm -hmm. small things. You know, of course, my body was giving me hints that I was ignoring. And logically, I knew it wasn't the healthy thing to do, but I still did it because, you know, I was driven by, uh, you know, I'm ambitious and driven. And when I 
get going, you know, it's hard for me to stop. And but Mm -hmm. my my health and my relationships, you know, I was paying the price for that. And I totally, you know, you know, didn't have any boundaries with myself. And and which meant that I didn't have boundaries with my family. I mean, everything was just out of whack. On the outside, Mm -hmm. you know, people seeing, you know, me online and my business, they would have thought, you know, I had it all together, uh, I'm successful and all that, but I wasn't. And, and, you know, and I didn't feel guilty about it. It's just like, it was like, you know what, what is more important? Like, I I do not want to die way way before my time because I I was working too hard and wasn't taking care of myself. Yeah. That's, and that's a reality. Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear about all these, you know, I don't know all these, but oh, there's you a do lot. hear of people, you know, having heart attacks and dying because of all the stresses and pressures that they put on themselves mm-hmm. really because the outside world like the people you work with, work for, whatever like it's actually like I've I've come to realize this quite recently actually is um, people what am I trying to say like people understand mm-hmm. more than you think mm-hmm. um, and you have to be able to put more trust in other people and being able to say you know what I am swamped. And I can't do this for you right now, but how about next week or what about next month or whatever? And allowing yourself that permission to realize like, hey, you know, I'm I'm putting way too much on my plate and I don't have to run myself to the ground to please everybody. Um, Because I know like that's one of my biggest issues. Like I'm a huge people pleaser, (laughs) which is probably why I'm in the industry that I'm in with design. Cause like, that's one of my most favorite things is when I'm done with a project and they're like, Oh my God, Maria, you know, I didn't know that I could do this or this is so beautiful. Like that like makes my heart just sing whenever Mm -hmm. I hear that. And it's addictive, you know, or when you help out one of your, um, one of your clients and maybe they have a breakthrough in their business or, they're like, oh, my God, I, I, you know, I have a client now or thanks to you, I was able to quit my job and now I'm happier and I'm freer. Like, it's it's so addictive to to hear and feel that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm I used to be a huge people pleaser, Maria, too. Um, matter of fact, I was going to write an article about this in Morpheus magazine, online magazine, um, uh-huh. because in, in you know, this started at a very. Not at a very young age. I'd say, like, probably around puberty, like, you know, uh, trying to be accepted and want to hang out with, you know, certain people, like, in school. And, um, oh, yeah. You know, and I focused on that. Like, it, it was, like, I look at it now, and it's like, oh, my gosh, it's so stupid. But yeah. back then, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> we were kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but back then it was, like, serious, and it really affected our lives, even though it, we really didn't have any. But... <laughs> the, the thing was, is that, yeah, I was a huge people pleaser. Like, I wanted to be accepted by, you know, by people. So what I ended up doing, I'd start doing things that I was taught by my parents not to do. And I was going against, you know, the things that they were instilling in me to help protect me, of course, for the long run. And, mm-hmm. and you know, that people pleasing, like, got me in a lot of trouble, like, a right. lot of trouble. Like, oh, my gosh. So it was something that I really had to work on. Like, it's, you know, not not really anymore, but it took a long time for me to get through through that. I mean, it was unhealthy people-pleasing. Like, it was so bad to where I was doing some crazy, effed-up things, mm-hmm, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, just to be accepted by people. And it's like, wow, I really did not love myself. You know, yeah. because if I did love myself, I wouldn't care if I was accepted by somebody or not. Because if somebody cannot accept me, then that's their loss. Yeah, you know? on, yeah, exactly. Like you said, it's it's their loss. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think? What do you think? Looking back on that, I don't know if this is something you, you want to hold off for your article, but what do you think was like your probably your breakthrough moment like was it during your adult life or was it still in your adolescence when you're like f this like this is stupid oh, <laughs> what am gosh. I doing? well into my adult life you know because in my 20s 
I, I was doing a lot of partying, ripping and running, and it was like the uh-huh. same thing, but just on a level as an adult to where, you know, I would, you know, I got into some trouble, you know, so mm-hmm. I really, that really didn't start changing until I started my business, Maria, because like this whole entrepreneurial journey, it's a personal development journey, so I had to learn more about myself, I had to rediscover who I really how who I really was as a person and who I am as a person because I never did that before. I never mm-hmm. did that before until mm-hmm. I got into business for myself because, of course, the coaches that I worked with and the people that I was inspired by, you know, personal development came along with it to where I started recognizing these beliefs that I had that I thought were true. Um, I started noticing, you know, my low self-esteem, uh, lack yeah. of confidence, like all of these things. And, you know, as an adult, like I'm still working through these layers. I'm still trying to sure. pull these things off because I spent so many years um, trying to be accepted, uh, going against my morals and values, uh, not really knowing who I I was as a person, as an individual, you know, because I was so focused on the outside and trying to be accepted and um, and I spent many, many years in happy, you know, and I'm still haunted by some of those things. Yeah, I'm still trying to work through some of those things, but I'm definitely at a better place today. Um, of course, I want to keep on improving more and more and more. Oh, yeah, we're always a work in progress. Yes, sure. yes. But, I mean, going back to what you're saying about, like, it's addicting when someone gives you praise about something that you've done. And it and it it is addicting, especially if it's something that you love doing, and you love to make people happy. You know, you want mm-hmm. them to be happy. So, you know, that's the same with me. I, I'm I'm thrilled when a client of mine is getting the breakthroughs that they've been wanting. Um, it's more important than mine because, like, I want them to succeed uh, more than me. You mm-hmm. know, I want them to have either the same amount of success or more. So, yeah, it can be addicting, definitely. Um, hearing, you know, your client saying how wonderful, you know, how wonderful um, you delivered, you over-delivered type of thing. Yeah, and, exactly. Mm-hmm, so, yeah, that can be definitely addicting. And um, and that's another thing, like, it's so addicting that it can turn into, like, starting to, to work more and not really focusing on taking those breaks and um, – Eating, I mean, all of this is all intertwined and it's all related. And, you know, this conversation has turned into about, like, self-care and being intentional about the things that uh, we do as creatives, you know. Um, Like, self-care as busy creatives, I mean, it has to be intentional. Like, we have to actually schedule this stuff in. And, yeah, it seems, like, basic. Like, duh, yeah, you got to sleep. Yep, you got to eat. But it's like, look, when... When someone is a creative and they're in this space, like, that's all that they focus on. So yeah. it's good to have these reminders or, or you know, like, your, your babe, he reminds you to eat and to rest. He takes care of you, and you need that. You know, you need that because he's, he's like your compass, you know, he's mm-hmm. not on track, which is something you just... So, yes, it sometimes makes me mad. I'm like, you're not my dad. I, I need you. Yeah, but, really, no, but I know it just comes from a really good place in... You know, going back to what you said about being intentional and, you know, self-care, it's kind of funny that this kind of evolved into that because in June, I'm focusing a lot in my um, Design and Organized You group is um, is going back to those basics mm-hmm. of self-care and, you know, being intentional with what you do during the day and, and how you go about, sorry if you hear that, there's those landscapers, I tell you, it's always like at the worst time. Like I hate that. I'm like, Why? like seven o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. I'm like, come on, right? Yes. Are you joking right now? <laughs> yeah, it's it's just going back to those very basics. Um, that that like you say, it's kind of like you know, duh. I need to eat. Duh. I need to sleep. Mm-hmm. But um. It wasn't until, and I know this might be like nerd alert, but (laughs) it totally, totally helps, is is, um, making those um, blocks of time and even scheduling in those hours that you're going to, um, what's it called, eat and, you know, take your breaks. Even with 
stopping Mm -hmm. with um, one of the things that I had a problem with was knowing when to stop working. I would work, you know, even, you know, well into until like dinner was served or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really important to have those business hours, if you will, you know, if you want it to be 7.30 to 4.30, if you want it to be 11 to whatever, it's completely your prerogative, you're the boss, but it, I had to, like, say, okay, this, you know, my alarm at 4.30, that's it, I'm done, now it's time to go spend time with my family, so Mm -hmm. that intention as well is very important because it, it adds to your self-care, and that, that self-care is, um, it has to a lot, a lot to do with balance, a right. balance in your life. And, you know, as mompreneurs, women entrepreneurs, you, you got into what you're doing because you kind of want it all in life. Right. But you, you you can't do everything. You can do anything, but you can't do everything. That's one of <laughs> kind of one of my mantras. And so being able to physically block those times and train yourself. Sometimes we have to retrain ourselves into these basics of self-care yes. and intentional thinking and intentional living. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's super important. And, and I forget. Everybody forgets sometimes. Like you get into that um, that rhythm. Say like you're launching something, mm-hmm. or you know you're you're writing a book or whatever. So you get into these seasons where you're working really hard, where it's important to have those seasons as well, where you kind of, you know, step back and say, okay, it's time to, you know, take care of me, whether it's um, working a few less hours during the day or maybe going and taking that vacation with your family. So right. so all that is very important, just like you said, that intentional self-care living. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more because it, it has to be done. Uh, in or- I mean, I don't believe in balance. I believe in prioritizing. Like, balance is something that we'll never achieve as imperfect human beings. But prioritizing mm-hmm. is something that has to be done, especially, like, with putting yourself first and scheduling the time in. Like, if I don't have a planner or a calendar, I forget what day it is. I don't always know, you know. Like, <laughs> I know, and that's bad, right? But the thing is, I know. No, but that. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because <laughs> I'm the same. I have, girl, I have three planners. I have two that I write down in. And then one, my Gmail or my Google one. Uh-huh. And then I'm sure I have a fourth somewhere. <laughs> then Lori's just keeping the TV so quiet. Okay, let's go fix that. She's complaining about the lawnmower guys. Too. Oh, those darn lawn, lawnmower guys. <laughs> she can't hear Rapunzel. <laughs> you were saying... I need a calendar. I need to write stuff down in order for me to remember. And... And it's good to do that because you don't want to have to be worrying about, like, oh, my gosh, what do I have to do today? Um, If you have everything already laid out, you don't have to use up your brain cells to figure out what you got to do during a day. Yeah, so do you designate days, like, Mondays are for marketing and Tuesdays are for client calls? Uh, How I do it, like, right now, like, Tuesday and Thursdays, no client calls whatsoever. And then, like, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, that's when I have my client calls, but I'll only have a max of how many people now. Like, I only have, like, two two people max per mm-hmm. per day um, because I um, my goal is to work less so mm-hmm. I can create more. I have the same uh, rule, I think, because I used to do three, like, in my afternoon. Mm-hmm. I would just kind of skip every half hour. But it got really exhausting because yes. you... You're so involved and you're so like into that one and one hour, and then when the hour is gone, you're like, Whoa. yeah, yeah, you drained, you <laughs> yeah. drained, and like I, I need like an hour to recharge after that, and you know I work, I work, do the actual work, like the work that's gonna make me money. Um, that's what I focus on. So instead of the busy work, you know, I focus mm-hmm. on the actual work that's gonna bring in the money, which is you know I'm, I'm. I have three money-making activities that I focus on every single day, and they can change. Like, uh, today in the Elite Society of Ambitious Moms Mastermind in my group, like, I shared, like, like how you can increase your income every every month or next month in June is to mm-hmm. focus on three money-making activities a day, and they can be different things, but just three. And if you mm-hmm. can accomplish these three, then you're on the right path because every day you're – 
you're doing this every single day, you're going to see the return on investment. So, like, one of them was to, you know, create a freebie uh, because because I'm going to be selling a master class on uh, building an email list. So I'm starting with creating a freebie so I can start building up the interest list for sure. for that. And then because that's going to result in money, right? Sure. And then the second one is to create a video for a freebie that I just released the other day, the confidence formula, because <gasps> I plan on Oh, I'm going to be making a video today, too. Are you? Oh, cool. Yeah, for the um, Creative Preneur Society, uh-huh. I'll be doing, um, my freebie is going to be like, you know, the, I'm going to, pay, I can't decide if I'm going to do four or five, I need to look at my calendar, uh-huh. but calls, just, you know, 30 minutes, free calls, mm-hmm. consultations. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. Cool. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. I mean, that's exciting. That's fine. So with yeah. this video, I'm going to I'm gonna go live with it, and it's going to be like less than a minute, and then I'm going to mm-hmm. turn it into an ad so I can get more people to download my confidence formula checklist because I'm going to be um, offering a group program to help people um, with their mindset. It's like a mindset development program. And hold on. Very yeah, I'm recording right now. So yes. I want to go into more detail about the confidence formula and how it can help people. So that's another money-making activity is to create a video so I can turn it into an ad to uh, for lead generation so I have an audience to promote this stuff to. And the third thing was a, a strategy session to my existing list at a special mm-hmm. offer. Like um, I usually only offer like a, a handful of free strategy sessions. Uh, but I'm transitioning now to where I am actually charging for that strategy session. and But they're going to get, you know, a special offer. It's something that nobody else would ever get. Um, and, of course, there's a deadline if they want to want to take up on that offer. But sure. th- those are my three money-making activities because all of them are going to lead to making money. Um, right. That way I know if I do those things, I'm fine. I don't have to worry about you know, oh my gosh, the money, or worrying out about work that's not going to help me produce money. Like, the thing that a lot, I mean, I would rather create, continue creating, so I can continue to provide value and solve people's problems out there, uh, whatever they are, you know, in their business. But if I'm focusing so much on busy work, it's going to feel like I've filled my whole day with, like, stuff. I'm busy, but at the end of the day, yeah. none of it's anything that's going to help me get the income that I need to keep my business going. So um, you focus on... And it's so easy yes, to fall into that. Oh, it is. guilty, guilty, guilty right here. Me too. That's why <laughs> I work less now, but I make more money and I'm more creative because I'm not so stressed out from all the busy work. Like, I used to... Uh, write down to-do list and it would end up being a mile long and of course the chances of me going through that list and completing it would never happen so I was like okay I just need three things for that day that I want to focus on and what are those three things that I have to do no matter what so I focus I'm glad you mentioned that um have you ever read the one thing Mm-mm. no I remember we talked about this before yeah I totally recommend that um because talking about um what is it? Who? By Gary Keller. Yeah. I love, I'll, I'll probably keep mentioning it for the rest of our friendship. Because it is just. <laughs> until I it, read it. It's such a, yeah, until you read it. Read it. <laughs> I will. It's, it's so good because it talks about what you just were saying is, you know, coming up with those three things. And it's not just like three random things like, you know, I'm going to update my website Mm -hmm. or I'm going to hop on to Facebook and, you know, talk to people on post, but you have those three things that make you money. And like I'd mentioned probably before, I guess, is that once you take those three things and then if you can focus on one, and Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that he says is, is pick the one thing that's going to make everything else either, um, what is it? I'm probably like totally botching it, but basically saying like pick the one thing that's going to make all the other things unnecessary mm-hmm. or not needed at all. So your mindset of, okay, these are my three things. And I'm sure that you categorize them too. Like, okay, what's the very first thing I'm going to do today? Cause you're not going to do all three at the same time. Mm-mm. Right. So I think that's super, super important. And, um, 
I even, because <laughs> I'm such a visual person, like, mm-hmm. I even go as far, and you don't have to do this, I don't think, I guess it's just a personal preference, <laughs> but I started to even, like, categorize things, because I have so many arms in my business, mm-hmm. you know, I have my interiors, I have um, my Design and Organize You group, and now I'm adding to that tier with, you know, the Creative Preneur Society, even though I've been dabbling in it for a while now for the past year, I'm actually making it into an actual thing um, as part of my company since it's, um, you know, something that I want to do, and it's it's going well so far, so why the hell not? Right. Um, and so... I even have it to the point where, like, one arm, like, everything that I have to do in that, it's green. And the second arm, everything that I have to do that is pink. And the other one, everything I have to do that is purple. And so that way, like, it, it's even, like, trained my mind. Like, when I see when I see the color green, I'm like, okay, I know I have to do this. And it totally has trained my mind to really focus so that for that next hour or two, I know exactly what I'm doing um, for that um, portion of my, of my company. Um, and like you said, first, you know, first doing the things that make you money because hell, we got to pay our bills and stuff. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that's, that's really, really important to do. So I'm glad you touched on that because that is one of those things too, that would take, took me, you know, a long time to realize because I would sit down and do all that busy work that said, didn't really matter at the end of the day. Like when I first started, I thought, okay, my website has to be impeccable and, you know, I have to have all the bells and whistles and I would spend so much time designing and laying stuff out and blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the day, I've made zero dollars. Right. I hadn't called anybody. I hadn't reached out to anyone. And by the end of the week, I'm like, well, what the fuck? I just, I've been working my ass off the entire week. Um, why, why am I not making any money? (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) I mean, and it's, and it's, and it's funny because once you start noticing or once you realize how you're prioritizing your day, it, it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, duh, Mm -hmm. that's, that's why you're, you're focusing on, things that don't really matter because um, going back to the website, like I thought I had to have a wonderful looking website and, and um, it wasn't until not to say that I ignored my website, but I kind of slowed down with that and just put the things that I needed up there. It really didn't matter. Like I started off with interiors, right? Mm -hmm. And if people wanted to see samples of my work and maybe I had like one or two up there, kind of, sort of, um, I could just send them PDFs of my latest work and boom, that was it. So something that I thought I had to work on hours on end, I ended up doing in five minutes or less and had better results. <laughs> so of course when I realized that, I was like, oh man, <laughs> if I only knew. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, I mean, yes, this is something, and I'm glad we're talking about this because uh, I, I know a lot of mamas that are probably listening to, well, not probably, but that are listening to this, probably are doing so much busy work and they're wondering why they're not making money. It's because you're focusing on the busy work. Like, leave the busy work to somebody. Hire a VA. Yeah. Um, or if you... And it's not that expensive. No. When people told... When my coach told me, hire a VA, I'm like, what, do you think I made a money? Like, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's I'm worth it. it. I mean... But it's, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. And it's not that much. Mm-hmm. And you don't... I mean, especially when you're starting off wet. Like, I have one, and, and she does stuff for me, like, maybe three, four hours a month. And I pay her, like, not even $100. Right, right. So but can, it's so worth it. Yes, because you, it frees you up. You're able to focus on the things that you want to do. You're able to be more creative. Like, you have yeah. so much more time to create because that's something that you're gifted at, you know. So, yes, pass that busy work along because, you know, we have to build teams anyway, especially if we want to build that empire, you know, you can only do stuff by yourself for so long. And if if you absolutely don't have the money and you're bootstrapped, you have friends and family that can help you in some way, some shape or form. Like my, my oldest son, Drew, um, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, 
or right before I went on my uh, sabbatical, like more than a couple, uh, he helped me with my social media posting, like on Twitter. You mm-hmm. know, I had him take care of that. That was t- tedious work, but I, I paid him for an hour or two of doing that for me to schedule all my tweets out, and that was great. You know, yeah, I bet that thing. that can take a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so um, use your resources. Use the, you know, use your family and friends. I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help you. I shouldn't say use, but ask for your friends and family's help um, because I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help you. Um, I'm great at delegating at at home. You know, I'm great at delegating at home. Mm-hmm. So it, it needs to be the same like with work. You know, delegate with work. There's interns, too, at colleges that are hungry uh, to learn about probably. Oh, yeah. You know, that your, was one of my first mm-hmm. hires was an intern because um, at least, what's it called? Like they use it for their portfolios. Yes. Um, you know, they can put it on their resumes. Uh, so, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of resources out there. Um, also, one of my first ones, uh, just like you hired your son, I actually hired my brother on. So that saved, woo, like three, four hours of my week, which is valuable. If at the end of the day, it's really valuable. Who would you recommend? Like if you just are totally like, let's say there's no friends or, you know, everyone's busy and whatever, like they mm-hmm. have their own lives. VA Who, all the way. in your opinion? Um, VA all the way. VA all the way. VA <laughs> all the way. One of the lessons that I learned five years later after being <laughs> was building a team as soon as possible is the fastest way to scale your business. Like from day one, you go in, you know that you need to start building a team so they can start helping you scale your business. So you're more profitable, have a bigger impact. So uh, anyone that's new, they need to start building a team. Uh, know that you don't, you can't do everything on your own. And I mean, if I had to start all over again from scratch, Mm-hmm. One of the first things that I would definitely do is hire, start hiring a team, you know, uh, get a VA uh, because you're a business owner. Yeah, they're solopreneurs and all that. I mean, I'm a, technically a solopreneur, but the thing is, I know I need a team in order to help me continue to expand my business. Some people don't want to build an empire. Some people don't want to make a multi, you know, multi yeah. six, seven figure business. I do. Which is perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I do. So I yeah. know I, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that without a team. And it takes a lot for one, at least for me anyways, like it, it really took a lot for me to, I guess, realize, I don't know if this is like a pride thing or I've just been used all my life mm-hmm. to take care of stuff by myself yeah. and I don't know if it comes from being the oldest and so I was always the one in charge and I was I guess that's why it makes me you know so boss boss like you're <laughs> mean you're a boss no <laughs> I've always I've always been delegating and leading and yeah. telling no I'm just I'm a dictator no you're I'm just kidding dictator. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've also on the flip side of that like I I grew up thinking that I had to take care of everything mm-hmm. on my own and, you know, don't bother anybody and don't worry anybody else and kind of going a little full circle here from the beginning of not really taking care of myself and getting to that point of burnout and hearing Stacey Walker's story and scaring me, <laughs> scaring me straight. I scared you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I mean, I'm like, it can, no, I don't, you don't, I don't want, want that. that. Heck no, you don't <laughs> want that. That was a nightmare, and that's why I'm sharing this. That's why I'm having a video series next month all about self-care, and that was inspired from my own story of running myself to the ground. Like, I never, ever, ever want to be in that spot ever again, which I won't allow myself to because I scared myself straight, you know? Mm-hmm. And being able to share that with other people, I mean, it had an impact on you, which... I'm just finding out today that it did, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, yeah, it is scary. I mean, dang. Yeah. I mean, either you can do irreversible damage to your body, yeah, or you can just die. And it happens yeah. all the time. And it happens. All yeah. the time. So you have to just really put your priorities in order and just realize, you know, if you want to get to where you Whatever you desire in your life, like whatever you, wherever you see yourself, you got to take care of yourself. 
you got to take care of yourself, and um, it, it starts with you first, and before you can take care of anybody else, life is just so much different when you actually put yourself first. I know some people think that it's a selfish thing to do, but it's like, no, it's not. It's selfish not to. Yes. It's, it's, it's selfish not to. Like, absolutely. I tell my clients, like, when they want, like, if it's an organization job or whatever, and that's something that I'm going to touch on next month as well, mm-hmm. is, you know, it's one thing to have your home, your space, you know, nicely organized, functioning, um, you know, looking beautiful, but it it always starts from the inside. Mm-hmm. No matter what it is that you do in your life, it starts from the inside, whether it's for your business, for your babies, for your husband, for your wife, for anybody. Before you start helping other people, it's uber important to look on on the inside. So whenever I start with any client that I'm helping with home organization or office organization or whatever, I always <laughs> kind of joke around that um, I'm also I'm also a therapist <laughs> <laughs> because I it's it's important to look inside and see what it is that and I don't want to say change because no I don't want you to change but mm-hmm. what it is inside that's like bothering you or why are you why is it that you're looking for this type of help or or why is it that you want to um, have this business um, it's it's important to to look in there and see what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong because what you're doing wrong is going to lead you to the solution that you want whether be it in your home, be it in your relationships, or in your business. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's there's always, you know, like you had said, you know, we're you're always a work in progress. So there's always going to be some kind of a challenge in some part of your life. And it's so easy to look outside and be like, you know, well, that's wrong and he's wrong and, you know, this is a mess. And, well, why is it a mess? What's what's going on inside? So once you start looking looking within and start realizing, you know what your uh, what your values are, what um, what you hold dear to your heart, what your mission is in life, what your passions are, then everything else kind of falls into place. Everything else from the outside starts starts to make a little bit more sense, and mm-hmm. then you start seeing the solution more than you do the problem. Absolutely. Thanks for And sh- that's my spiel. <laughs> that's your spiel. I mean, thank you because I couldn't agree with you more because the more I focus on me and my inside, like the the better I feel and I'm discovering things about myself. And I, I don't know, it's just crazy when you really start intentionally work doing the inner work, how different your life change you know, it becomes. I mean right yeah, away. it's a domino effect. Yes, it is. And and I'm giving it a chance. Like, I know I tried doing this years ago, but I guess I just wasn't ready to face some things um, within mm-hmm. my life. I'm not too sure what yeah. my reasons were. Um, I don't know. I, re- I really couldn't even answer it. But I'm so glad that I'm I'm addressing these things to do the inner work. Yeah. Because there's so many things that I want to accomplish and do, and I don't want those dreams to die. I don't want them to die. So I'm willing to do whatever work is necessary, even if it's so uncomfortable. I'm still it's really to... uncomfortable. Yes, it <laughs> and is. And awkward and yucky. And it is. And you don't want to do it, but you got to. Yeah, but once you do it, you're going to be like, oh. Yeah. It's, you'll feel lighter. and Yes, you physically do. Yes, you feel lighter. You're more at peace. And then you'll <laughs> realize that you, don't, that you no longer have certain blocks that are keeping you from having the success that you desire. Because I'm not just talking about business. I'm talking about life in general. I, For sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it touches every part of your life. And, you know, I'm not saying, like, my life is fantastic and great right now, but it is ha- a hell of a lot better than what it was even a year ago. Um, even and isn't that the ago. idea, though? Mm-hmm. Isn't that the idea? Like, as long as you're, like, I, I know I hear a lot of coaches and, you know, people, like, on TED Talks and stuff. As As long as, like, you can look back a year ago and if you can answer the question, am I better than I was a year ago? And if the answer is yes, then awesome. You're on the right track. Then the next year you're going to see that you're better than the last year and so on and so forth. Again, dropping down those dominoes. But if you look back the last year and you're like, I'm, a, I, you know, I'm the same or I'm worse or whatever, then that's when you really start to look inside and, you know, have that uncomfortable talk with yourself. 
Absolutely. And not everybody wants to do that inner work because it is uncomfortable. But um, any client that I work with, they, they have to do the inner work. Otherwise, they're never going to reach their goals. And they're going to keep on coming up against these walls. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's necessary. And I know some people could be rolling their eyes right now. Like, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. just saying based off of my, <laughs> you know, based off of my experiences and the experiences of my clients, um, my, sure. my past mentors and the people that I look up to and admire in the entrepreneurial world, they all do inner work. They all do inner work. And so yeah. obviously there's something going on there. Absolutely. It's, um, I mean, I think you said it perfectly. It's, it's got to start, you know, within you. And, um, I mean, your Oprah is your, you know, I can't think of anybody else right now, but you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> I know. We like, always all say these, like Oprah. Oh, <laughs> the big O. The uh. holy Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we're listening, Oprah, no. Well, maybe, yeah, right. who knows? <laughs> That woman is hey. not listening to us right now. She has more important things to do than in listening. my in my world. She is, Stacy. Don't take that away okay, from I me. Okay, I won't. I'll let you have it. I'll I'll let you keep it. Thank you very much. All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, no matter how successful you are, whether you're starting or you're, you know, in the middle, high up there, um, it's you're always. And you should be like if, if you tell yourself that you're done learning or you're done growing or you're done progressing, you might like, as well should dig a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, how sad is that? That's not that's not good. And like I've come at times because I'm a very, very stubborn person. And if I with like being called out. Mm -hmm. Caesar calls me out. Um, my brothers, you they hate call it, me. I hate being you? called. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, nobody likes it. Of course. Not. Um, <laughs> but I, I get, I get very, I get very emotional and very offensive and, you know, kind of like a toddler, and, mm -hmm. you know, cross my arms and stomp Stomping away. Your feet. Stomping <laughs> like, feet. no, I'm not. I didn't do that. Or <laughs> I'm not like that. Or I didn't say that. And then of course it isn't, you know, it takes me a day or whatever. And you come back and you're like, Oh, okay. And, and it, I, I think back at that moment where I'm throwing in my tantrum thinking I know it at all. It gets very silly. So yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Biz Mom Real Deal podcast. Are you a boss babe creative? Are you wanting to run a business that's actually aligned with your vision and your way of life? Well, the Creative Penor Society is where you want to be because it's for the boss babe in you that's ready to take her life and business by the horns with the tribe of creatives there with you. Join the Creative Penor Society at thecreativepenorsociety.com.